Hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for stopping by and giving me a chance to talk about the work we are doing. Uh, it's been a great day so far, and I hope uh, you have also had a lot of fun. Wow, so let me begin my talk. Uh, my talk today is titled Fuzzy Matching with Spark, and I'll talk about the problem we are solving, why we are solving, and how we are leveraging Spark for solving this problem. So briefly, something about us. We are a group of people who like to challenge ourselves. We like to set new goals. We like to look at new ways of solving an existing problem. Uh, we just like to push ourselves, and that's the reason why we have chosen the problem that we are attacking. So, so as we all know, like as big data scientists and engineers, data is growing, and data is growing at a phenomenal speed. The various sources of data, the kind of data, the variety of data is making it very difficult to analyze and to make any kind of sense out of this data. Any models, any sophisticated predictive analysis, any kind of statistics you want to do on, this, on your underlying data, if your base data is not clean, there is no way you can get correct results for your business. A good, a good size uh, problem, uh, a big problem with the underlying data is duplicate data. So uh, now as data is coming from various sources or data within the single source will have chances of being duplicated. These duplicates are not exact duplicates. There are duplicates, uh, records are typically multi-attribute and it's very difficult to spot out exactly which records match with each other and which don't. The problem is also a hard problem to solve because if you look at n records, you're actually comparing n into, n. you basically are comparing n into n pairs and that makes it quadratic in nature and very difficult to solve. Again, there's no standard notion of similarity across records across records. So how do I say if the first name has three characters same and the last name has six characters, probably first six characters same, and the age is nearly four or five uh, years apart, probably these people refer to the same person. Similarly with organizations, products, restaurants, movies, any kind of data, there is no standard notion by which we can define similarity. Underlying data also has a lot of omissions, typos, errors, and other issues, which makes the problem even more challenging to solve. So my favorite use case here, you have burgers, would you like fries? Cross-selling and upselling. A very standard business problem. You have various uh, services and products which you are offering to customers and you often want to increase your revenue through cross-selling and upselling different services and products. And you want to make sure that you're not indentating your customer who's already part of a product to try out the same product again. So this is where you're matching data across two different source systems and seeing that you're only getting targeted users for your products and services. Lead generation, again, I have a database of organizations who are my vendors or who are my customers, and I source other data from maybe LinkedIn or Crunchbase, or you, I buy a database of um, customer or vendor information. Now, how do I mash up this data? Because the formats would be slightly different. There would be typos, there would be null values, and make sure that I'm targeting the right leads. banking and financial sector, a very big use case in various scenarios. Personal credit ratings, you're getting data from various sources and you would like to have a consolidated view of this data to be able to ascertain what is the credit history of an individual. Fraud detection, definitely don't want to hand out loans to defaulters, not to deal with people in your blacklist. And a lot of other use cases yellow pages, 
any, any place where you're consolidating information from various channels, catalogs, inventory, product listings. So you have a problem where you know, data could be duplicated and there is a need for fuzzy matching. So when we looked at this problem, uh, although the problem is complex, but we wanted to solve it in a very simple manner. We had a wish list of uh, features that we would like to build, and our biggest uh, challenge has been that we want to work with any kind of data. We don't want a tool which is specific to a domain because this uh, problem has applications across domains. So this was our simple wish list, work with any kind of data, highly scalable, we want, to we want to attack the quadratic nature of the problem, and we don't want the user to do any manual configuration of rules or algorithms. Now when we evaluated Spark, uh, we, we were very impressed, in fact we were blown away uh, with the features that it offered. Uh, the first thing that stuck to me, I'm sorry, this is not in the order that uh, I wanted to present in, but um, so the first thing that struck us well, was that there was no need to orchestrate multiple jobs. Uh, Spark was taking care of all our tasks and scheduling them in the appropriate manner. We also do a lot of sampling and create a lot of heuristics about our underlying data so that we can choose the right ways to bring nearly similar records together and only then perform comparisons. So Spark's pa sampling gives us a great uh, benefit there. MLlib has been a great help. We are completely based on MLlib. We, have, we are using some of the existing uh, algorithms which are available in MLlib, on top of which we've also built some of our clustering and classification algorithms. We look at the same record from multiple views, and Spark's nature of, being, of keeping data in memory really helps us scale this application. Besides the distributed and fault tolerance that, uh, that Spark provides. So how does a typical refire um, workflow look like? We have a very simple step. We take labeled data from the user, Every user has a notion of similarity on what records are same or not same according to them, according to their business case, according to their need. And we ask them to label this data. So in this case, if you would see, there are typographical errors. Each field has variations. Some of the fields are probably same. Some of them are missing. And the user is the best judge to say in their scenario would they like to label this data as same or not? We also accept a set of high-level data definitions from the user, data definitions which, which are very high-level in terms of is your data alphanumeric, is your data categorical? So you can specify that at a field level. You run, so basically based on, sorry, basically based on this training data, we create our models on what is the best way to partition this data so that we get similar records together, and then the best algorithms to run over this data so that we can say with confidence which of these are true matches as defined by the user. And once this is done, this is the output where, again, duplicate records are labeled together with the same label in the first column. So if you look at this, again, the tool has gone and looked at various kind of uh, differences across all the fields and in combination provided what is a duplicate record and what is not a duplicate record. So pretty much that's it. Feel free to visit our website and let me know if you have any interest or a use case for this. Questions? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, 
the question is how do you how do we take the user's input and take that turn that into algorithmic decisions uh, we ask the user to provide us two sets of data one is labeled positives and one is labeled negatives so labeled positives are labeled uh, is data which where we are saying that these records are actually duplicates labeled negatives are records which we are saying these are not duplicates then we run uh, our own custom algorithms on top of it and find what is the best what are the best algorithms which kind of get all the similar records together and then we learn the rules and we apply that on the entire set of data to present the results Yes, please. That's right. Okay. So once we once we take the label data, we actually learn what is the best way to partition this data. So we use. Uh, based on the input data we actually custom partition we learn the custom partitioning rules and apply that on the entire set of data so that's how we've broken this uh, this problem is not just n square this problem is also finding the right way of matching multiple fields so that is also an area over which we have worked so this is a two prong problem actually and both are again achieved through a combination of you know in-house algorithms as well as clustering and classification which is available in ml lib Okay, so uh, at, a, at a high level, we are actually not doing any normalization of data. Uh, what, what we are expecting is that if we are looking across records, across uh, multiple fields of the records, we are not actually converting, you know, any Robert into Bob and, you know, those kind of normalizations we are not doing. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat the second part of your question? Oh, yeah, so, well, I mean, the, the example of phone numbers mm -hmm. is one Uh, we I we don't have a specific phone type as of now, but it's pretty easy to build uh, something which, given the base framework that we have. So uh, as of now, we have you know very high level data types as an uh, alphanumeric, numeric, categorical, text, which is longer text, or word, which is smaller text. That's that's it. Any other questions? Thank you so much.